How to make a power up foam plane part 2 In part 1, we have finished all the paper parts. Let's continue to work on the foam part. In order to do that, we need first to fix the template to the plate temporarily. I'd like to use double sided removable tape to achieve that. But regular tape or glue should also be able to do the job. Actually, I made a mistake when making this part. Rather than putting tape on the template, I should have cut along the circle first. So that the template could be positioned against the plate more easily. That's a minor mistake and we can still carry on with no problem. Putting three pieces of tape on the template should be good for our purpose. Try to place the tape pieces inside the outlines of the parts so that it's easier to remove them later. This is when I realized that I should have trimmed the circle first. It's okay. I can do the trimming right now. It's just a little awkward to trim with some sticky things on the back. The trimming doesn't have to be very precise. It's better to stay outside the circle. Place the template right at the center of the plate, so that the outlines are inside the flat part of the plate. Press the template to stick to the plate, so that the template and the plate will not have movement relative to each other. Notice that there are some small red color pentagons with a letter inside. They indicate the suggested cutting order. The idea behind the suggested cutting order is to avoid the early collapse of the plate. This makes the cutting easier and more precise. Start cutting the letter A line. Then, find the B line to cut. Go on, to the C line. Find the D line at the top of the pentagon-like wing. Now, cut the E line on the left. This cut is connecting the previous cuts and the plate starts to collapse. So, watch out, and cut with anticipation. If you find the collapsing is a problem, you can put another foam plate. Underneath the plate being cut to provide some support. As long as you don't cut through the supporting plate underneath, the support will be there. And if you are really careful, you can finish the job with little damage to the supporting plate underneath. Okay, now the F line is cut through. We are almost there, and we are cutting the G line, the last straight line along the circle.
The last cut along the circle doesn't need to be precise. We can do a freehand cut following the circle. From now on, the foam part can lie flat on the cutting mat, which is good for further cutting. It's time to cut the H line, which is both the trailing edge of the wing and the root of the vertical stabilizer. Have a perfect cut here, which is easy now with the solid support of the cutting mat. So that you can have a perfect wing and a perfect vertical stabilizer. It starts to look like a pentaplane wing now. Let's finish cutting the vertical stabilizer. This is the trailing edge of the vertical stabilizer. This line is so short that we can simply have a freehand cut. Finally, let's cut the tabs at the root of the vertical stabilizer. This part of cutting is a little more delicate. If not careful, the cutting can tear a chunk of the tabs off. The precision of the tabs and their corresponding slots ensure their mutually good fit. A forced fit can distort the airframe, while an overly loose fit can reduce the structural strength of the airframe. Try to use less force and prepare to cut multiple times to have cleaner cuts, especially when the knife being used is not that sharp. Now, the cutting of the vertical stabilizer is complete. And we can now remove the template. And also the tape. Have a final inspection, trim off some imperfections, and the vertical stabilizer is done. Next, let's finish the cutting of the pentagon wing. Cut the slit, in which the groove part of the paper power-up mount can go. Once again, don't force it, slice several times to make one clean through cut. The slit is done when we remove the slim cut off piece of foam. Okay, 
Now cut the three slots for the three tabs of the vertical stabilizer at its root. Slice three times on each of the long sides of the slots to cut through. Cut the short sides of the slots freehand. It's a good idea at this stage to work on the other side to finish the cutting of the slots. When the cutting is complete, we can simply push to rid the foam that occupies the slots. The slot that is on the trailing edge is the easiest. It comes off very easily. We are finishing the last slot. Ok, now the cutting of the pentagon wing is done. There is one more thing to do before we remove the template. Notice that there is a red color CG line on the template. This is the moment that we can mark the CG line easily on the foam. CG stands for Center of Gravity. Its location relative to the airframe is very important for stable flying. We are going to check the location of the actual CG when the plane is built. The CG line provides us with a good reference to compare with. With the CG line marked on the foam, we can remove the template now. Also, Remove the tape segments used to affix the template. We have all the parts now cut, which brings us to the end of part 2. For the next steps, please stay tuned for part 3 of this how-to series. Thanks for watching.